The Pleiadian agenda comes primarily through Sacha of Alcyone, a very forceful Pleiadian wisdom figure who is closely identified with the goddess. When the Pleiadians first began to impulse me as an adult in 1984, I heard their transmissions for months in Morse code. Gradually their voices clarified, but the next thing I experienced was a great deal of confusion about the way they discuss earth sciences, human behavior, and spiritual evolution. To put it simply, what they were saying about us was like trying to decode light going through a kaleidoscope. Their view of us is multifaceted and geometrically interrelated, and it can be difficult to translate. In the late 1980s, their complex point of view seemed jumbled and confused to me. But I kept on transmitting their perspective, because what they had to say was more fascinating than anything I was hearing on Earth. I have to admit this was not an easy time for me. It was often very psychologically complex, because the more I got to know the Pleiadians, the more I realized that their voice was actually my own inner child voice. These wisdom teachings coming in stronger and more clearly were forcing me to remember my true and non-imprinted natal self. As I saw that, I began to remember myself all the way back to when I was four months old, when a whirlwind swished the curtain next to my crib and the beautiful small blue beans came to visit me. As hard as it was, I knew I was finally totally integrating this presence. And then Satcha began speaking to me in 1992. Satcha has a very clear voice, and so it's time for Satcha to just speak with you. I am Satcha, keeper of the library on Alcyone, the central star of the Pleiades. I am here to help you decode the central intelligence of your planet, to prepare you for the cosmic party that begins on winter solstice, December 21st, 2012. We Pleiadians have responded to your signals by participating in your evolution during the last 26,000 years. This has been possible because your sun is actually the eighth star of a spiral sourced from Alcyon of the Pleiades. Now the time has arrived for you to remember your stellar identity. The great cow gods and goddesses have been preparing you to swim through the spaces within the interlocking strings of the net. You are to be like illuminated fish, swimming out of the age of Pisces into galactic synchronization with all the other stars of the Pleiades. The time since zero point will be transformed into a gossamer web of photonic light that will open your inmost heart to the exquisite liquid essence of the Pleiadian love vibration. In the Pleiades, Earth's age of Aquarius is known to be the age of light of Gaia. The time when the third star out of the Alcyon spiral, Maya, along with the eighth star, your sun, move into the photon band together. In your legends, this is the story of the return of the twin. Alcyon always remains in the photon band because it is the progenitor of one of many Milky Way stellar spirals. Van Gogh one of many incarnated Pleiadians during this grand cycle, was imprisoned because he painted stars as spirals. As a Pleiadian, he was naturally free and creative, yet he felt totally trapped in linear space and time, and this terrified him. Now your scientists are seeing that some stars do form spirals of light in empty space. Van Gogh could actually see this spiral form of stars, which is a faculty of multidimensional sight. It's time for Van Gogh and all the great artists who have excited you by enabling you to see beyond your realm, to be freed from prison. Yes, a renaissance is happening on Earth once again. If you doubt this, observe the children of Earth. Study Van Gogh's star paintings, for they will help you see how your own son 
is actually part of the Pleiades. At the end of the Mayan calendar in 2012 AD, Alcyon, Maya, and your solar system all merge in the photon band, and this will synchronize you with the galactic center. Then the cosmic party begins. Everybody who is in body on Earth is hereby invited. I will be frank with you. It will not be easy to get into this party. As with any culminating social experience, you must make it your goal. You will have to prepare yourself for it, and you must begin by figuring out all the steps to this goal through the end of time. To accomplish that, you must have a model. To have a model for what will happen from now until December 21st, 2012, you must gradually integrate the astrology of stellar orbits and cycles. The astrologers and Maya researchers will continue to keep you updated about key times. In this supernal dawning of the age of Aquarius, I, Sacha, have returned to collect the galactic intelligence you gathered while your solar system journeyed through the galactic night since 8800 B.C. I am here to receive these gifts of your knowledge in exchange for your information. If you will just follow your own fascinations, together we will penetrate this constricting net until you are finally free. Our library opened in your minds in 1992 as we recalibrated Earth with Sirius, the star that has been preparing you for this opening since August 1972. The electromagnetic field of Earth was so heightened in the summer of 1972 that many scientists reported later that they feared your planet might explode or undergo a polar shift. Sirius holds the 6D geometrical light body of Earth in form. The ancient Egyptians came from Sirius to teach temple technology to you just so you could learn about sacred geometry. Just as the Maya time records are opening now, so is Syrian spatial knowledge, and I will tell you all about that opening. Gaia is opening her body, like a lusty woman as the Syrians and Pleiadians choreograph the dance of Earth's indigenous peoples, who still remember this ancient knowledge. This triggered a geomantic activation of planetary telluric powers. So your planet was very unstable in 1972. In August 1972, the Syrians generated a great stabilization beam out of the stellar computer below the Great Pyramid at Giza and directed it right into the sun. This caused a green healing spiral to shoot out of the sun, awakening solar initiates into remembering their Pleiadian origins. During this most recent journey through the galactic night, you became highly self-reflective and your brains are getting very activated. You've developed yourselves magnificently so that you would be ready to challenge forces that control your reality at the cosmic party. We Pleiadians like to refer to these forces as the World Management Team. And as far as I, Sacha, can ascertain, as I read your vibrations, these forces are directed on Earth by the Anunnaki, the Nephilim of the Bible, which means in Hebrew, gods who came down to Earth. These Anunnaki Nephilim are the ones who established the extensive and deeply ingrained management system, the net, at zero point. For a gilded and engraved party invitation, you still have time to challenge your inner belief systems about these great gods. Nobody with residual god poison gets an invitation to the Cosmic Party in 2012. To exercise these lords, you must integrate the stellar intelligence of Gaia. Gaia does not resonate with superior and separated white male gods. She quakes, belches, and vomits in response to their oppression. I have come to direct the voices in the cosmos who wish to speak with you now. Why me? 
I was selected by the Galactic Federation for a fusion with my vehicle, who has been inhabiting Earth since the atom was split in December 1942. She was sucked by a planetary shudder into the fetus carried by her mother, making it possible for us to live in your midst, seeking to understand the nature of radioactivity and gold on your planet. And she is having a simultaneous life in the library on Alcyon. What I have discovered so far is that all your stories about stellar humans, such as Enoch, Anu, Christ, Isaiah, and Mary Magdalene, are cloaked in lies. These lies obsess you because you sense that these great beings came to Earth to show you the way to stellar access, but their true story is hidden from you. They came and deposited their codes in your vortexes, causing you to be fascinated by the traces of their stories. These memories are very juicy and alluring because they make information pathways in the galaxy. Now you are becoming obsessed with these great archetypal beings as the information pathways in the galaxy are getting opened and cleared. These stories exist in planetary vortexes connecting Earth's telluric fields with all dimensions, and pathways of galactic intelligence are responding to you as you pursue these records. Many beings from other realms visit these vortexes to study your stories, because the vortexes are records of stellar intelligence, the galactic mind. You are trapped in a tightly woven net that has you more trapped than you realize. This net was brilliantly constructed by the Anunnaki, who exist in the next dimension above yourselves, the fourth dimension. These great beings wove this net so that you would be held in density with them through the age of Pisces. Why? The love force of Christos was so intense on Earth that you had to be held in density so you could integrate this elixir over two thousand years. Out of desire for freeing themselves from being your parents, the Anunnaki stimulated you with Piscean archetypes. Compassion turned into pity. Love turned into dependency. Spirituality turned into religion. So you would finally choose to move beyond pity, dependency, and religion. You would grow up and become compassionate, loving, and spiritual. But they have become so bored by the limitations in you set by the net that even they can see now that your boredom could eventually blow up this prison. How do you prepare for the party? You might think all you have to do is get dressed and put on your makeup. In fact, you have to open your chakric systems and clear your emotional bodies. People, if you knew what really goes on when you pray in a sacred place with your sense of self activated to the four directions of your planet, you would pray this way all the time. The entities needing to experience you are passionate, exquisite, and honorable. We Pleiadians want you to be sitting in sacred circles with your spine straight or having orgasmic sex all the time. The Syrians want you to develop your minds so that you can see sacred geometric light forms that hold your reality in form through time. We will teach you how to live every moment of your life in sacred space, tuned to the four directions with your spines straight. We Pleiadians are here to coax new teachings out of the higher dimensional beings who will be attending the party. Boredom is not allowed. What is worse than being stuck at a party with a boar? The Creator first experimented with biological creativity on Earth, which is the physical location with the potential to simultaneously hold nine dimensions in its intelligence. Gaia is the intelligence of Earth, and she is a much more powerful being than you imagine. Notice where the party is being held. You are about to find out the purpose of Gaia's magnificent and unlimited creative powers since she has been chosen as head scientist of the biological laboratory of the Milky Way galaxy. 
Anything can be created in a laboratory. But Gaia decides whether any creation belongs in her field. If she does not choose it, she will cleanse it from her surface. That's why she blew up the Atlantean laboratory. As you are entering the photon band again, Earth will become multidimensional, and her biosphere will be the source for determining which life forms will be disseminated throughout the galaxy. The qualities of this dissemination will be based on what remains in the biosphere once you have become enlightened. This will be a time when it will not be possible to be partially alive in your bodies. Those who do not remain will go out of body because they have not quickened to the light. Since your genes are the structure of life itself, only enlightened geneticists will be able to work with DNA. This going out of form will simply be ecstatic immersion in Gaia, a great cosmic orgasm in your realm. The Pleiadeans are the keepers of the children of Earth. The children have spoken to us, and they want their mothers and fathers at home in the sack, and they want to be out playing in the new image fields of youth. Keep explorations of images and chimeras out of 3D and feel free to explore your emotions by exploring the 4D archetypal realm. Go for it. Have a good time, as the goddess always fulfills all desire. I know you will stop killing when you trust us, which means you trust yourselves. Remember that you can have what you want. Virtual reality and physical integrity are clear examples of how dimensions function by means of tools. And just think, you will work with nine dimensions simultaneously when your solar system travels through the photon band. During the last 26,000 years, you have been impulsed by marvelous teachers from nine dimensions. These beings have always been your gods and goddesses, mythological archetypes and lately your heroes and movie stars. They have graced the pages of your literature, the altars in your temples, and the screens of your televisions and movie theaters. Really, people, from our perspective on the Pleiades, Elvis uncannily resembles Yahweh. The great 4D archetypal powers have had a great time pulling your strings while you've been puppets dancing on the stage of life. Now you are ready to peek at the puppet masters. If you react to this idea with resentment, would you rather remain in closets collecting dust and mites? You have enjoyed your dances, and these masters have evolved with you in your world. It is an exquisite drama. While well, one of you is having sex in 3D, 4D beings can feel your energy and trigger you into lust, guilt, abuse, or fun. 5D entities can get excited by your kundalini fire and have cosmic orgasms. 6D entities can expand the fields of your pulsations throughout the galaxy. 7D entities can carry your feelings via galactic information highways. 8D entities can organize new morphogenetic fields out of your sexual seismic waves. And 9D entities can birth new biological forms in the darkness of galactic center black holes. Is this not awesome? Since the Pleiadeans chose to live with you in your realm during the last 26,000 years, there are things that must now be seen and cleared. They would like you to know now that they once made a big mistake with you. That error has caused you to blame them for other traumas and abuses in your realm that they did not actually cause. The Pleiadeans know that their agenda cannot be accomplished without owning up to their own mistakes, just as yours cannot. They interfered with your free will when you were traveling through the photon band during the age of Leo, beginning 13,000 years ago. When your solar system travels in the photon band during Leo, 
Great earth changes are triggered because ego identity and belief in regal rights must be established during that age. The age of Leo was the age of kingship, and beings from many stars and galaxies came to earth. During the last cycle, this process caused your poles to shift, triggering the last ice age. When the shock hit, the Pleiadians did not comprehend that you were in a balancing process, since they did not experience such processes. We could feel your pain and death because we were with you, and we slipped out of compassion and fell into pity. We were so deeply involved with you that we tried to rescue you by leading groups of you to safer areas and lifting some of you off planet during the most intense shiftings. In your confusion, you thought we must be gods, and you identified yourselves as victims for the first time. You shifted out of the now just when you were ready to claim your own experience and feel the ecstasy of Gaia flipping her poles. You asked to be rescued, and we felt your pain so vividly that we became your gods and rescued you. Just when you were ready to transcend fear, we stopped your process. We will never do this again. Maya, the third star in the Alcyon spiral, travels in a tighter part of the Pleiadian spiral closer to Alcyon than your own solar system. Maya is in the photon band more often than in the galactic night. Like your solar system, Maya is there for about 2,000 years of Earth time, then travels in the galactic night for only about 1,200 years before going back into the photon band. The Maya do not influence Earth much when they are traveling in the galactic night, as they were recently from about 800 to 1987 A.D. Their mysterious disappearance in 843 A.D. occurred when they went out into the darkness. Before leaving, they made sure their calendar was securely implanted in the third dimension by carving it in stone all over Maya land. Now, as the age of Aquarius is beginning, Maya is entering into the photon band with the sun. The end of the calendar is triggering new stages of evolution for you because you are gearing up to learn how to set an intention of what you want to create and be for the next 26,000 years on Earth. You are being subtly orchestrated by the galactic Maya. The Maya orchestrate timing in various worlds in the Alcyon spiral, and Alcyon holds the records of time. The Maya are keepers of time. Your sun is a keeper of frequency, and Alcyon is keeper of intention. You all can participate in setting the intention for the next stage of evolution with the Pleiadians by attuning to Maya timing, raising the vibration in your sun, and mastering the mechanics of dimensionality. Then, the Cosmic Party will have the best entertainment roster. The Milky Way galaxy is a ten-dimensional system of cosmic intelligence that expresses itself in nine dimensions. The first dimension is sourced in a beginning form that manifests itself as an intelligent system, such as the central core crystal of Earth, which sets up light lines of communication from the core crystal through nine dimensions to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Like any system... The galaxy evolves in time and creates in space. The method of each creation is generated in its own first dimension. An intention of that creation is sourced in the future, the galactic mind. Earth's exploration of herself in time has resulted in orbital patterns and cycles in the galaxy that access nine perceptual dimensions. The galactic mind is able to hold the thought of nine dimensions simultaneously in trillions of systems. The time has arrived for you to expand 
and ground your intelligence by consciously perceiving everything in nine dimensions in your realm, because that will free your mind. Geocentric astrology, viewing the solar system and beyond from a location on Earth, is the most advanced tool you have in 3D for decoding the time and quality of your unfoldment. As we have said, the fourth dimension is where your emotional body resides. It is profoundly ruled by the archetypal planetary forces of your own solar system. The qualities and relationships of these planetary bodies actually do express your personal unfoldment. Literally do the cycles of Mars generate your feelings of power and anger. Fifth dimensional astrological science offers you freedom from being stuck in linear time since it analyzes and describes the qualities of time. You can examine the planetary cycles, delineate their qualities, and prepare yourself for various periods in your life. Astrology enables you to look at how the drama of life is artificially pressed into past, present, and future. This enables you to gain perspective on emotions as you feel them, to watch the feeling realm to detect agendas, dramas, potentialities, and spirits impulsing you. Once you master this level of self-observation or self-reflection, then you realize that your access to other worlds is available precisely in these feelings. Feelings are awesome because they are your non-physical vibratory field that is resonating in 4D through 9D. Once you attain that perspective, you cannot be impulsed or jerked around by any vibration. Many fascinating patterns rise out of your emotional and spiritual richness and give you access to scintillating pools of dark creativity and dances of light dynamics. The galactic night intelligence in the darkness outside the Pleiadian spiral holds form for the horizontal disk of each Pleiadian star. These disks are composed of twelve divisions that cause density, which then creates history and stories within great cycles of time. Otherwise, there would be only birth, a life, death, and no cyclical memory as with animals. There must be a weaving of creative memory. We must remind you, the animals are superior to you. Their creative memory is stellar, for a spider grandmother created them first. The Milky Way is a river of animals. These weavings attract stars that make worlds by means of sacred geometry, morphic light fields that generate still more 9D vertical axes. It goes on and on, and if you can imagine it, Maya also has a disk of 12 divisions. The 7D donuts of photonic light from the galactic center are information highways that stimulate curiosity. This arousal comprises the 7D photon bands seeking the galactic center. This curiosity is what causes the rods of 7D photonic light to curl back on themselves, forming them into donuts. The galaxy would disintegrate into empty space without the nuclear gravity in the center, which then shoots out pulses of light. Maya and your solar system are now moving into the photon band together. This arrival is uniting the Pleiadians and Syrians so they can find a way to solve Earth's dilemma with the planet Nibiru, home of the Anunnaki, which used to be an outer planet of Sirius A and is now the outermost planet of your solar system. The Anunnaki have gone too far triggering karma on Earth. Both the Syrians and the Pleiadians have now figured out how Nibiru manipulates the inhabitants of Earth in 3D. As the Pleiadians have said, they figured this out by being with the inhabitants of Earth, and the Syrians figured it out by being with the inhabitants of Sirius B. The new biology must integrate all this knowledge. From Spring Equinox 1987 to Winter Solstice 2012, 
biological life will be harmonized with divine intelligence so that the feeling body of earth can carry the intensity of the coming galactic orgasm. The Milky Way orgasm must be strong enough to carry life throughout the whole galaxy. If you doubt this, notice how earthlings are all giving birth too frequently, seeking to encompass this intensity in their bodies. Earth is Elcyon's laboratory. Elcyon is Earth's library. And Maya is running the schedule so that nobody is late. Elcyon quickened Earth with Pleiadean love vibrations at zero point through the Syrian expansion triggered by the incarnation of Christ, a human carrying the intelligence of nine dimensions simultaneously. Christ implanted the Pleiadean love vibration, and that vibration quickened Earth until 1987, when at harmonic convergence, these 9D seeds were released all over Earth. These seeds became flowers in each body that would release this essence into Gaia. Gaia will release each human who becomes the sacred tree into the Milky Way galaxy, like a child blowing on seeding dandelions. The Maya have told us that they have managed to find a way to get you to see that the future creates the present. The Maya tell us, after playing around with you for eons, that they noticed you were becoming fascinated with time. So they made up a game for you. They created the Mayan calendar with an end date and revealed it to you. As you began to understand its importance, you could see that you are progressing toward this end time, as if it is a huge attractor pulling you in deep space. As you've been getting closer to this end time, the Maya can again influence your reality in 3D, since you are both moving into the photon band, and they are conducting the orchestra for the end time's ninth symphony, showing you how to play your instruments. They have been composing the music for the Cosmic Party, and it began with Beethoven's Ode to Joy. You are waking up and realizing that a future intention is creating your now. Tricky and outrageous, isn't it? Well, it is even more fascinating than that. In order to set an intention that could create life, able to be disseminated throughout the galaxy at the end of the calendar, everything you put into it must have perfect integrity. For life to be in integrity in your now, it must resound with the most powerful forces of Gaia to reach the black hole in the galactic center. Earth first entered the photon ban at spring equinox 1987 and has been steadily moving into it further one week more each side of that entry point every year. The border of photonic light is inching across the disk of your solar system. Planets further from the sun than Earth have been exposed to photonic light when they are orbiting in the section of the disk already in the light. Earth was in the photon band from March 16 to 23 in 1987, then for three weeks in 1988. The photonic slice in the disk increases by two weeks each year, and precisely half of your solar system will be immersed when the photon band reaches your sun at winter solstice 1998. Then Earth's entire orbital path will be engulfed in this tidal wave of light at winter solstice 2012. Eventually the whole solar system will be totally in the photon band. During the next 2,000 years, it will travel all the way through it. At winter solstice 2012, any biological intelligence of Earth that can resonate to this galactic vibration will be disseminated throughout the whole galaxy. Dimensions that can't hold the galactic tone will not be able to remain in form in the photon band. Each of the nine dimensions is beginning to tone within the photon band. As you are in your dimension... Are you a lone, reedy voice, 
or a great booming voice in the magnificent choral. To blow these seeds throughout the galaxy, a great symphony is required that can vibrate our silica filaments and turn carbon residue into diamonds. Beethoven will be back, hearing his own late quartets that he composed after he was completely deaf in 3D. Van Gogh will even get his ear back. Because your voices need to be so powerful, your vitality and physical integrity must be great. The photon ban was first detected in 1961 by means of satellite-borne instruments. Later, in the 1960s, Earthlings began to move the focus of their perceptions off-planet when the first astronauts went to the moon. This was a movement of consciousness out of 3D. The photon band might have always been there. Prior to leaving your planet, you had no way of knowing. Possibly all you are really doing is exploring galactic identity as simply a new and more encompassing way of thinking. Whatever it is, your view of reality has expanded into the galaxy. What do I mean? You are beginning to pinpoint your perceptual focus in a new center, the black hole in the galactic center of the Milky Way. This enables you to reach a new stage in your evolution. You are moving into the photon band, and we Pleiadeans who have been intimately involved with evolution on Earth are being impulsed by the increasing photonic light in your realm. According to quantum physics, both of a pair of photons that originated in one positronium atom always have identical angles of polarization. The spatial orientation of the photon's wave-like action as it travels away from its point of origin, original positronium, no matter how far apart they become. Thus what happens to a photonic particle in one part of the galaxy happens to its twin simultaneously. In this way, what is now happening in the Pleiades to the star Maya is exactly what is happening in Earth's solar system. Now is the time to understand exactly how the photon band is the activation mechanism for the climax of the Mayan Greek calendar. The photon band has been triggering release of negative karma big time since 1987. We Pleiadeans are truly astounded by your release of negative karma. Have most of you noticed the intensity of the emotional body processing and the release of your addictions since 1987? As you progress into the photon band, the elements of your physical integrity, the parts of you that gather together to make your body according to your unique soul agreement, will be flying off and uniting with antiparticles melding into light. Once you are in the photon band, your depth of field, your rich biological memory and time, will be your actual embodiment, as long as you can clear these miasms. What do I mean? I have watched you respond to total immersion in the photon band before. This is how it looked to me in 24,000 B.C., and it still looks this way to me today. I see an exquisite, lush, all-species garden, and there you are, deep in the greenness as the hot solar light dissipates. Life is vibrating all around you, and you are in samadhi. There are no emotional body miasms in your physical body. You are photonic, a mass of cells that is pure intelligence, because you have surrendered everything you were holding from density in the galactic night. That is when the Supreme Council of Alcyon meets to read your codes and work with you to set intention about the next 26,000 years of evolution. The field of Alcyone is filled with photons that resonate with their twins elsewhere in the galaxy. Alcyone does not manifest solid things in linear space and time. Positrons have already collided with electrons and formed photon pairs, and the karmic transmutation process is not part of its reality. 
That is why you perceive the Pleiadians of Alcyon as so loving. Other Pleiadians have different characteristics, but Alcyon as the central star always directs the herd. We are genuinely fascinated with how you evolve in dualities, and we feel no judgment in our hearts about your karma. We do like to stimulate your life force, which triggers collisions between life and karma. I, Satcha, love this phase with you when photonic influence increases and these dualities resolve into unified insight. Then I can read your energy. I tell you people, you have nothing to fear. Solar light is a magnificent balm that triggers your growth and evolution in the galactic night, and then you return to the photon band. When the Milky Way galaxy was activated by the galactic synchronization beam, its liquid darkness essence pulsated, and photon bands became nuclear clearing zones of the whole galaxy. Every star and planetary system within the galaxy sooner or later goes through this 9D galactic pulsation by means of photon bands. These bands support the form of the galactic arms, which are filled with electrical energy like your spines. The pulsations in the arms clear zones in the galaxy by means of exquisite galactic sound tones. And some of you are already hearing this sound as Kundalini rising. This is activation time in the galactic arm where the Pleiades are located. As the Pleiadians have said, at the end of the great calendar in 2012, biological intelligence will spread through the whole galaxy by means of this information highway of light. It is as if these photon bands are stimulating antiparticles out of hiding in the whole galaxy, and then the photon force in the bands is increasing. Nothing will remain in 3D form in the photon band unless it is amped up to nine dimensions. Yes, this is true, but all this is happening slowly enough for all of you to accelerate your bodies to synchronize with it. If you choose activation, your access to energy clarification exists in your own spine, which will trigger the whole electrical system of your body, and karma you need to finish will make collisions. The photons that split out are signals that awaken the magnificent snake line coiled in your root chakra. The keys to kundalini activation lie deep in the Mayan great calendar, which is all based on snake medicine. The day counts of this calendar are kept by day keepers who compute with 13 numbers in 20 days. The serpent, Aho Khan, that the great calendar is based on, is Dorisus Cortalis. It has a forked penis and grows two new fangs every 20 days, making it the ideal model for duality in quantum particles. The new fangs account for a 20-day turnover, and the diamond pattern of interlocking squares on Aha Khan's skin is composed of sides of 13 scales. These squares of 13 numbers are the basis of all the weaving patterns and cosmic symbols in Mayan art. That is, the weavers and artists reweave the cosmic pattern constantly in time, and they are never separate from the timing of the larger great calendar. The day count and the weaving patterns keep the time of the cosmic calendar. Isn't that amazing? Awakening the sacred serpent... Aha Khan in your bodies is the way back into the garden. As you move further and further into the photon band, the photons have triggered emotional body processing that is now prompting the need for an elemental cleansing. The photon band will increasingly agitate, spewing elements in your physical bodies all over the planet. Nuclear laboratories are very dangerous things to be near just as our angry people. You function by resonant vibrations, and it is time to scrutinize how you are vibrating. Do not be near people who will not lift themselves to your vibration in these times. 
As you move closer and closer into the photonic light, the spewing intensifies. More people are getting cancer as they resonate with these chaotic forces. Meanwhile, those of you who are cleansing your bodies, minds, and emotions are not vibrating to the spewing. Humanity is splitting into two groups. Those who did intense emotional body work from 1987 to 1994 and minimalized their exposure to radiation and chemicals and who are now getting triggered by lingering miasms and learning to release them. And those who are not cautious about toxic exposure and who have refused to clear their emotional bodies and who are angry all riled up and getting sick. One group is on high alert, intending to somehow find clarity and health. The other avoids looking within, waiting for the millennium while the elemental forces rage deep inside. Watch out for people who look like mad dogs. As you heal your physical bodies, you are also processing emotions that come up and must use the extraordinary knowledge contained in these feelings to send that energy to others. When you offer this release to others, it can return to its natural vibrational resonance. If you do not utilize this magnificent energy in this way, you will just be seeking your own trivial answer. Meanwhile, in light of the crisis building on the planet, group action is required for the critical leap. Triviality avoids the bigger issue, need for biological integrity as the photon band arrives. Answers about life are no longer available just in 3D. Everything is energy and vibrations, and just like being around angry people can make you sick, People who heal themselves and release that good feeling into the field make everybody feel better. These feelings can heal other humans, animals, microbes, plants, elementals, and spirits. These feelings are a potent source of mental and spiritual healings that seem to be miraculous and that are more subtle but more potent than physical and emotional healing since the mental and spiritual realms are causal. God and intent literally determine the health status of your organs, and people get sick from ideas all the time. The power of your personal healing field is directly proportional to the power of your love, which always attracts Pleiadian assistance. Have you ever noticed how children seem to thrive like healthy plants in some families and wilt in others? Love draws the Pleiadians into your world, especially when you are children. For those of you who have grown up, more and more of you must contact your inner child, the being in you who remembers the Pleiadians. If you send out this boundless love, a Syrian consciousness may suddenly appear ready to open a doorway you've been knocking on for eons, because the Syrians expand the structure opened first by love. Feelings are the only way you can move yourselves out of linear space and time while you are in body, since they are the access point for beings in other realities to communicate with you. <laughs> 